Welcome back everyone, Sheep Dog Smokey here, and this one honestly is not a surprise, uh, although it should upset uh, quite a few people. A school in Australia, Melbourne, has decided not to use the word Mother's Day to avoid offending children who do not have a mother. Now, this is a trend. Honestly, it is. It's been going for several years. You can see here they say they no longer subscribe to a binary world. Uh, and this is a, a very concerted effort and an organized effort to further degrade the nuclear family. We have people, we have young people all over the world that are being raised more and more in broken homes. And, of course, this is now praised uh, because the nuclear home is a very traditional thing. It's been proven that children who grow up with a mother and a father tend to not get in as much trouble. They tend not to go into shady or criminal dealings. And, of course, that research, anytime it's done, is, is denounced. It's denounced as forcing Christianity on people, but if you look throughout history, the concept of the nuclear family, the concept of the traditional family, is not just a Christian thing. It is Jewish, it is pagan, Buddhist, it is all over. People throughout time have known that men and women are different. And I honestly don't care if I upset anyone by saying that. Physically and mentally, men and women are different. Men typically are physically larger and stronger, and women are typically more nurturing and more delicate. And yes, there are exceptions to this. You need only look at someone like Gwendolyn Christie, or, uh, I forget her name, but she played uh, Angel in Deadpool. Uh, she's uh, an MMA fighter, I believe. Ronda Rousey, or any of the athletes that buck the trend that women are smaller. And yes, it happens. There are very small men. And a lot of it comes from just the fact that we are not genetically just clones every generation. Uh, if you look at my own family, there are male cousins and male uh, uncles of mine that are not as large as I am. If you look at my nephews, my oldest nephew is roughly 5'11 and a half, 6 foot. My youngest nephew, who is four years younger than him, is already 6 foot 1. And... If you look at my little brother, he is shorter than me. I'm about 6'1". My dad, 5'11". It, we, there's ranges. My sister is actually taller than the national average uh, for women, while my mother and my grandmother on my mother's side were both right at 5 foot, or maybe just a shade under. Both of my mother's sisters are right there at that same height. Her aunts, all there. So it's not something that's just hard and set, but it is typically the norm that men are physically larger, stronger, uh, and women are not. But we have a move to destroy the norms, and to do so, traditional values have to be demonized and vilified, because until you can make something evil, you cannot remove it. And we're, we're getting very, very far along on the road. When you see that you have movements saying that men can get pregnant. Well, biologically, they are not men. They are female who have gone through surgery to change their physical appearance. Men cannot get pregnant. Males cannot. Females cannot impregnate anyone. The human species was specifically laid out this way, and I don't know... How many of you subscribe to creationism over evolution? Uh, if you've followed me for any amount of time, you'll know that 
evolution as it pertains to the origins of life is something I do not subscribe to. I do know that species evolve and change over time. You look at Cro-Magnon versus Homo habilis versus Homo erectus versus Homo sapien, and they're very, very different from each other. Uh, language, use of tools, agrarian society versus a nomadic society. Things change. As humans circumnavigated the globe and settled in colder t climates, typically pardon me, typically they would be larger to survive the colder climates. Those who settled in hotter, more arid climates typically were leaner uh, to survive the hotter, arid climate. I'm not saying that species do not evolve and change over time. I'm saying that the whole, poof, humans were here, uh, just doesn't make sense to me. Because of the sheer fact that men and women, males and females, are so perfectly attuned to complement each other that it calling it an accident is stupid. But we get to something like this where Mother's Day is removed to avoid offending children who do not have a mother. My nephew is being raised by my parents, uh, my little brother and his wife at the time, we're going through a very rough patch in their life. Unfortunately, uh, his mother is still not able to, to care for him full-time, and in a couple of years it won't matter. But if you look at it, in that home, he does not have a mother. He has a grandmother who is raising him. And every Mother's Day, he, ce he celebrates her. Every Father's Day, he celebrates both my father and his because they are still in those roles. And he would be right here with me, if he was not at work, telling you that this is insane. This is horrible. Give it another month, and we'll probably see this school in Melbourne removing Father's Day, uh, either to fight the concept of so-called toxic masculinity, or we'll see them doing it to avoid offending anyone who does not have a father. Look to Georgia and uh, several other places throughout the U.S. where men have stepped up and they have decided that while they are not the father, that young men need a father figure. There's a school, I believe it is in Georgia, I may be wrong, I know it's in the South, where one of the teachers runs a gentleman's society, a young men's society. The young men wear college shirts and ties and blazers, and they are taught how to be a contributing member of society, upstanding member of society, and to be just a good man. And honestly, I don't do it much longer before some liberal from California sues them from California to demand that the uh, exclusion of females be ended. And of course, at that pro point, the program will wither and die. Look at the Boy Scouts. Once they opened it to anyone and everyone, the program is dying. And it all starts with crap like this. This idiocy of removing traditional family roles from society is the first stone in destroying society. When you basically tell people that it is, it's just as normal to have two moms or two dads or none at all, you normalize everything that that takes away from the child. I grew up in a very small area, very small town, very rural area of Texas. Uh, my parents married in 1972, uh, celebrated 47 years together this year. And I went to school with people from single-parent homes. And a couple of them have ended up in horrible places. Uh, one of them is actually still in prison, maybe for a long, long time to go. A couple of them got out of that, and they managed to get their life onto a better track, despite the handicap of having only one parent. But they had to work a lot harder. I had strong men and strong women around me, my grandparents, my parents, aunts and uncles. I've told the story before that um, my grandmother, my mom, my mother's mother, taught me to sew. 
Uh, and while it was minimal, I could not make my own clothing, uh, at least not anything that didn't resemble Cro-Magnon era where I'm just barely covered, I can hem a pair of pants, I can put a button back on, repair a stitch, and so on. Saved my bacon more than once in the last 30 years. Uh, and she taught me a bit about cooking, but it was my grandfather, my dad's dad, that taught me the most about cooking. Uh, my dad, him, me, it's our kitchen. We love to cook. Uh, the only person I don't say it's my kitchen to get out to is my mother, because just don't do that. But it was also that my dad reinforced in me that you hold the door for a lady. Um, and then ultimately it became you just you hold the door for people. Uh, that took all of about a few seconds to be ingrained in me. It's just you show respect to others. You show them the same respect they show you. But we have a concerted effort now to remove all of those traditional mores from society. It is now becoming a society of do whatever you want, and if people tell you it's wrong, you can beat the living tar out of them. As we saw in, a vi in the video I did the other day about the UNC incident where a pro-abortion student assaulted a pro-life student. And this is going to result in more and more and more problems before anything happens to stop it. You're going to see, at this school in Melbourne, you're going to see students who live in a traditional family uh, mocked or worse. Now, if any of them dares come forward and say, but I would like a, I would, I want something that says Happy Mom's, Happy Mother's Day. I want something that says Mom. And they're going to be mocked and derided, and the teachers may even tell them, well, that's not allowed. So now, instead of not offending students who don't have a mother, we're moving to purposefully offending those who do. And it is praised as progress. And it's going to cause more and more problems until just the complete fall from all forms of morals that we have in society. But I've talked about it long enough. Let me know what you think. You can always find me as at Sheepdog Smokey on Twitter. I do not use Facebook, uh, although I may be leaving Twitter soon uh, if the censorship doesn't turn around. Until next time, please make sure to like, share, and comment on this video. Remember to keep your comments civil. We don't learn from argument, we learn from debate. Please also subscribe and activate notifications. You can subscribe over here, actually over here, uh, and above it you'll find another link to another video. Until next time, everyone have a wonderful day.